This is a massive change. I mean, this goes all the way back to, you know, when it was body and white in the 60s. This change is almost akin to what happened in the late 70s and into the 80s when we went from the really big cars down to the smaller cars. I mean, this is, from a technology standpoint, you're talking about a massive architecture change in the chassis, the steering, uh, the drive line, all of that stuff. And then the body, of course, like you mentioned, it's, it's going back to the old, good old days of NASCAR where what you see on the road, you also see on the racetrack. And, and that's what we really tried to, to do with our design of the Mustang. We haven't had that many tests, but what we have found is that we're able to go to different compounds, uh, softer compounds, it seems like. The construction that Goodyear has uh, been using for years has had to change. Obviously, we're going to a larger tire, so it does, but the same methodology that they've been using for years has had to shift as well. So we're still learning that, but definitely uh, there's more grip out there with a wider and taller tire. We haven't really seen any pit stops yet, but you'll still see the high-speed ballet, the guys jumping over the wall and, um, you know, there's new pit guns and it's still, it's still the same thing. You got to hit the lug as, and get it on and off as fast as you can and, and stud the tire and uh, it'll, be, it'll be different, but still very similar. From an aerodynamic standpoint, aero was, is king. It, it was king in, with Gen 6 and it's still king now. There's some adjustments that the teams can make in the chassis and the suspension, but everything is common. Everybody has the same chassis, everybody has the same control arms and things like that. So it's really gonna come down to the detail and the engineers that are able to listen to their driver and figure out what they need to feel in the car. So the greenhouse, the deck lid, the spoiler, that is all basically common. Uh, some areas around the front and the rear wheel bands, those are common. And then the underwing. The underwing is probably the most critical aero device on this car because that's where everybody has the same part and that's where most of the air flows and that's where you're going to gain or lose performance. So from the Ford standpoint, obviously we know everybody's working to try and optimize everything, but from our standpoint, our design of our front fascia and our doors and our quarter panels was really built around trying to optimize everything that goes with basically a flat bottom floor with a diffuser. That's a symmetric body, that's a big key that's uh, going to change the way racing is. Um, you know, we're not going to have as much side force as what we've had with the Gen 6 car, so it's going to be a little bit different. We've got a lot lower downforce level with this car now. Um, so from our standpoint, it just really changed a little bit of how we do things and how we work with our teams. Uh, but I'd say we were we were pretty in depth with the aero side before this car too. The brake package is standardized. There's a heavy duty and a light duty package. And basically at Daytona, Talladega, and I believe Atlanta, uh, anything that's classified as a super speedway, uh, you're required to run the light duty package. Everywhere else it is a choice of whether you run the light duty or the heavy duty. Um, so yes, the rotors front and rear are larger. Uh, the thickness is a little bit larger. Uh, the brake calipers uh, are all the same for everybody. So really the, the biggest change you can make is in the, the brake pad and the friction uh, and, and trying to get that balance for your driver. This is just a, it, it's such a huge change. I mean, I, I started working uh, on cars and I mean, basically everything that, you know, from the short tracks on up, it's like a, a 79 Malibu. It, it was based on an old, GM metric chassis, um, you know, the spindles, they were basically stock spindles. We've been running truck arms that nobody's running anything since the 60s. Uh, a nine inch rear end, like all that stuff is was antiquated technology. So this is a huge step forward. I mean, rack and pinion steering, independent suspension in the rear, uh, a transaxle, five speed transaxle at that, uh, the 18 inch wheels, uh, the, the flat body floor with the diffuser. I mean, it's just a, such a huge step up in technology. And, you know, the goal of all of this is to make it so that the driver comes out a little bit more. So I think it definitely opens the door, um, certainly at the road courses. You know, we've seen some of that happen uh, already, uh, but we've also seen where the, the NASCAR drivers that run week in and week out, they just have a better feel for the tire, for the car. But I think you're going to see some guys like a Joey Hand and you know Austin Sindrick stepping into the Cup Series. Those guys, I think, are going to find some success. And with their success, there's going to probably be some doors opening up for some other guys that, that have that uh, sports car experience because these cars are 
much closer to a, a sports car than before when they were really just com completely specific. But it's really gonna make the driver shine through. So I would tell the world that if you wanna see the best drivers in the world, and I know everybody could argue about Formula One and all that stuff too, but if you wanna see the best drivers in the world compete, NASCAR is where it's at, because they're gonna race road courses, super speedways, short tracks, mile and a half tracks, and as much as people would like to say mile and a half are all the same, they're not. And the racing is gonna be incredibly exciting with this new car.